Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and welcome to Disciplinary Core Idea LS4A. It's on evidence of common ancestry and diversity. When Darwin published his ideas on common descent, he really didn't have molecular evidence to back him up. He didn't know how genetics really worked, and he didn't have a, clearly a picture of what DNA looked like or how it operated. And so he didn't have a lot of evidence. And when you're looking at life, the one thing that jumps out is the diversity of life. Look at all the different forms of life we have, from the archaea to protozoans, animals, fungi, plants, and bacteria. This is a branching tree of life, and the one thing that jumps out is how different it all is. And so the unity is missing, but there's going to be clear unity within life as well. So all life uses the same genetic material. It all uses DNA, uses the same machinery. Um, all cells are essentially put together in the same way. And so there are two concepts that are important that your students understand. That is the unity. It's what ties us all together. And then it's the diversity. It's all the differences in life. And when Darwin came up with this idea of common descent, and I love this picture, it's right out of his notebook, it was an amazing idea. He believed that everything on our planet, all life, came from one common ancestor and it branched off. And I like how he wrote here, I think this is what occurred. And if you compare that to the current day phylogenetic tree of life with all of the different groups coming off of that one single strand, they look very, very similar. And so what evidence did Darwin use to back it up? Well, he started with fossil evidence. And so if you look at these four types of animals, they all have the same bone structure. And so even though they look different, like a human arm, a dog leg, a bird wing, and a whale flipper, they probably had an ancestor that had similar bone structure. And you could also see it in the fossil record. In the rock itself, you could see fossils changing over time. So horses, for example, as they moved out onto the plains got larger and larger and larger and you could see the change in their fossils. A big piece of evidence we have today is molecular evidence, so DNA evidence. And if you look at the organisms on our planet that are most related to us, we can line up our DNA and we can compare it to their DNA. And if you line up human DNA and chimpanzee DNA, you'll find that there's only 1.2% difference in all of their DNA. If you look at a gorilla, that jumps to 1.6, and in a baboon, it jumps to 6.6%. And so we can compare how much our DNA is alike, and I mean exactly alike, and so we can see who's related to whom. There are new molecular tools that we're discovering as well, and so we can look at the evolution of organisms through their development. And so there's a set of genes called the Hox genes that essentially tell an organism where to put its body parts. And if we look at the Hox genes in a fruit fly and compare it to a vertebrate, we're going to find that they're very, very similar. And so we can see who's related to whom based on these simple sets of genes. And this idea of evolutionary development, or sometimes scientists refer to it as evo-devo, is very promising when we're trying to build this phylogenetic tree. We can also look at fossils and compare those to living things. So this is the glyptodon, which was a massive armadillo-like creature that weighed about as much as a car, and we can compare its fossils with living organisms like an armadillo today. So what's the teaching progression? Well, in the lower elementary grades, you want your students to understand that extinct species, be it dinosaurs or plants that aren't around or fish that aren't around, are going to look very similar to living species like these um, lizards that we have today. As you move into the upper elementary grades, we want to start talking about fossils both fossils of large organisms like dinosaurs and fossils of microscopic organisms like these stromatolites right here. And they tell us a little bit about what the history on our planet used to look like. Not only what the life looked like, but what the environment was like at that time. And also telling them that we can compare organisms that we have today to organisms that once were alive. As we move into middle school, we want to talk about the importance of rocks, and especially sedimentary rocks. And rocks, sedimentary rocks are formed when, when other rocks are broken down and then they're compressed, usually with water, over a long period of time. And we have thousands of different layers of sedimentary rocks on our planet. And what they tell us is not only the history of Earth, because we can radiocarbon date this rock and we know how old it is, but it also tells us about the history of life because we can find fossils contained within the sedimentary rocks. And so the fossil records are really documenting, right here we're looking at these fossil beds which are in the John Day strata, and what you'll find is as we look through it we can look at different times, so that gives us time, and then we can look at their relative locations to one another, and so we can learn about how life came to be, 
how life ended, how species went extinct, the great diversity of life, and then how species have changed over time. Other things we want to talk about in middle school are this molecular evidence that we're using to piece together history, and then this idea that we can compare living material or living organisms to organisms that were once on our planet. And so when we build this phylogenetic tree, in other words, this tree of life, what evidence are we using to put it together? Well, you should talk about that in high school, this idea that DNA is one of the biggest pieces of evidence that we have. Every living thing on our planet uses DNA. But it doesn't have to be a DNA. We could look at the amino acid structures within proteins. We can also look at the anatomy and, those, and how they've changed over time. And then we can look at Evo Devo. We can look at embryology and see what that tells us about development. And so that's Common Descent, and I hope that was helpful.